Welcome to episode 2 of Review, a series where I watch and analyse Irish films. Thank you to everyone who showed support for episode 1. I received a lot of feedback and suggestions for films to watch. I'm very grateful for all of that. I will be reviewing some of the suggestions in future episodes, but for now I thought I'd take a look at Love and Technicolor. Kevin Smith, no, not that one, also known as Kojak, is an Irish filmmaker slash rapper from Dublin. He's made a number of albums and music videos over the last couple of years and he's garnered himself a lot of fans. I personally enjoy his music and music videos, so I'm not coming at this review from a completely unbiased perspective. However, I found myself not enjoying this short film as much as I thought I would. It was an interesting movie with some unique aspects, but overall I'm unsure if I would recommend it or even watch it again. There isn't much to talk about in ways of plot for this film, but I'll give it some explanation. The story is loosely centered around a man, played by Kojak, coping with life after losing his partner. It's unclear if Kojak's partner left him or passed away, but in either case the film is about the effects of loss and grief. There is no dialogue in the film apart from three or four spoken words poems. The poetry shows that the protagonist is going through a lot of emotional trauma as a result of losing somebody he loved. The poems are quite well written so the film gets points for that. I was reminded of Emma Kerwin's Dublin Old School a lot when I was watching this movie. There's a thing they do in a couple of the verses of the poems where he repeats a word for emphasis, emphasis, emphasis. My opinion on that in poetry is that it's a bit unnecessary. You could just as easily have a pause before or after the word and it would have a similar effect. That's just a personal preference though, it's not really a criticism. The performance from Kojak is good even if it is a bit minimal. He definitely looks like he's dealing with a lot of emotional baggage in his acting. I do wonder however if his Dublin accent is somewhat exaggerated in this performance. His accent is slightly different in his other spoken word stuff and isn't as strong in his rapping or when he's interviewed. This is a minor gripe but I just felt like the speaking voice was a little bit unnatural. By far my favourite aspect to this film is the way it was shot. The cinematography is superb the whole way through. Some of the lighting, framing and shot composition was incredibly well done. There's a good bit of use of low key lighting and natural lighting. I like the effect that had in the film. It emphasised the depression of the main character. There's a couple of really impressive warners in the film too. A warner is a long single take with no cuts. These can be extremely difficult to pull off but they were used effectively in this film and looked very professional. The sound design in Love and Technicolor was extremely well mastered. It had this fantastic ambient atmospheric score that was utilised perfectly at certain points. Due to the fact that Kojak does music, I'm not really surprised that the score was produced well or that the audio was mixed well. My only criticism was that I was expecting the film's music to have a similar style to Kojak's discography, but I guess hip hop wouldn't really have suited the sombre, melancholy tone of this film. For me, a standout part of this film is when the protagonist has a dream. This sequence is shot and edited to be surreal and absurdist. I personally thought it was executed well and wished the rest of the film had the same trippy, drugged out vibe. If there were more sequences in the film with that sort of a style, perhaps the final product would have come out a little bit more original. Instead, when the character wakes up from his dream, we continue experiencing his dull sadness with a more grounded tone for the whole rest of the film. Just to summarise the points I'm trying to make, Love and Technicolor is an unusual movie. It has some great visual narrative and overall top-notch cinematography. The lighting is great, the editing is good, the poems are well written. But as a whole, I came away from this film unsure how to feel. There were so many aspects of the movie I enjoyed, I just don't think they were very well strung together or they didn't really mesh properly. There's tonal inconsistencies like switching from bizarre absurdity to gritty realism. The film is so light on plot that there wasn't really much to keep me invested. There's no real character arc or progression and it all feels quite flat. Overall I think this film is too derivative of Dublin old school. If the filmmakers had tried to develop a style of their own perhaps Love in Technicolor would have turned out much better. There was at least one sequence that felt very original and unique like a refreshing oasis in the desert of this movie. As it is now though I don't think I'd recommend people to watch this film unless they were like a diehard Kojak fan or if you like really enjoyed Dublin Old School. And if you do watch this movie be warned there is a scene where Kojak vomits multiple times in a row. I'm sorry if I was a bit hypercritical and nitpicky. I had very high expectations for Love and Technicolor because I'm such a fan of the previous works of Kevin Smith. No not that one. Perhaps it was these high expectations that made the film feel disappointing. If this film was made by somebody unknown to me I'm unsure if I would have enjoyed it more. Thanks for watching episode 2 of Review. Next week I'll be taking a look at You Ming's Anam Dum, suggested to me by the Irish Guy Vlogs.